Ciao, friends. Beth with Thimble Hooks. Thanks for stopping by. And since it's finally starting to get a little bit nicer, no more ice storms, no more snowstorms, we're going to move on to spring and summer. Yay! And we're going to make the easiest crop sweater ever. If you have a weekend and some yarn, you're done. So this is the one that I made. This is my favorite one. I made this one for my daughter. She already tried it on. Fits wonderfully. And this is all made with Yarn Bee Sugar Wheel from Hobby Lobby. This one is snow capped, which is white. And the pink is called Canyon Pink. And the bottom part, which I think is just gorgeous, this is my favorite. It's called Zest Wishes. What a great name. This is my original one. And you see how it's just changing the colors. This is like totally got a fall autumn vibe to it. So I'm going to save this one till later. But it has little tiny sleeves. Super cute. See, my sleeves were a little bit smaller here. So on this one that I call my final draft, the sleeves were a little bit bigger. But this is screams summer and spring to me. This one is autumn. This is the one we're going to finish today. I'm going to show you everything you need to know. All of these wonderful colors. So much fun. So, I'm going to set this aside for a minute. We'll show you where we start. I hope you're enjoying my video and my channel. If so, please click that button to subscribe. Thanks! Probably will want a bunch of stitch markers because it just helps because we're going to have so many stitches to mark along the way. You can count them all if you want to, whatever, but I like to use my stitch markers. You know that. And for my ribbing, I'm using a three. The very beginning, this is a three millimeter hook. And this is a pony because Prim didn't make me a three in my package. Aww. And my favorite trusty Prim four millimeter. We'll be using that today too. So first you start off right here. We work from the bottom all the way up, starting with this ribbing. So this will take the longest time. So once you get your ribbing done, you're almost done with the project. So I'm going to get my yellow out here and I'm going to show you how we do the ribbing. This one was made with Red Heart Super Saver, this one's lemon, so it's just a nice little happy, springy, eastery kind of yellow. All you need for this whole pattern is single crochets and double crochets. If you know how to make those, you can make yourself a super cute little sweater vest for the summer. Make it out of whatever you want. My favorite ones I was making out of cotton. This one is not cotton, so it depends on how warm you want it to be. Remember, we work our way up, so we'll start with this ribbon. Going to make a slip knot, put it on my three millimeter hook, and I'm going to chain 31. And do it nice and loosely because we're going to work in these back bumps. There's 30 and 31. So now I have a chain of 31. We're going to work this way and make ribbing. Really easy. So we're going to turn our chain over so we can see these little back bumps right in here. We want to work one single crochet into each one of those. So with our chain of 31, we're going to end up with 30. 30 single crochets down our back bumps all the way down. And here's my last chain right there. Back bump, single crochet. There we go. There's our first row of our ribbing. There we go. See, it's going to be nice and stretchy. So what I did for this pattern is the next 126 rows, I do this. Chain one, turn our work, and we are going to be working in the back loops only all the way down for every row. The only exception to that is the very first and the very last stitch of every row is going to be through both loops to make a nice edge. So this is both loops with a single crochet. Now we're going to start our back loop. So not both loops, we want to go to the back loop only which is right here and do single crochet. And just do that all the way. That's our sequence. Is just doing single crochets all the way down. Here's my last couple stitches. Back loop, single crochet. There's a back loop only. 
and a single crochet and my very last stitch here remember we're going to go under both loops and make a standard regular old single crochet and there's row two you can see it's already got a little ridge right here and that is part of our ribbing might want to have a clicker handy because we're going to do this a few more times that was row two the first row was our base row where we did our single crochets in our back then the back bumps of our chain and now that was row two and we're just going to repeat chain one turn your work the very first stitch we go under go under both loops and do a single crochet and then the, all the way down we want to go back loop only right here is a back loop and the back loop all the way down just remembering that the very outside stitches are going to be complete with both loops. So there we go. And that starts making all of these ridges right in here so it makes it nice and stretchy. Fit almost anybody. So what I did, and this fits my daughter perfectly, was 126 total rows of this back loop only. And you'll end up with a piece that's about this big. Just make sure this is going to fit relatively snugly around your waist, around your tummy, so that you know that it's going to fit. I ended up doing 127 rows. So this was our very first row, and then 126 rows of back loop only. And now we're going to turn this into a circle. I'm not going to do 126 of these right now. I'm going to set it aside, and we're going to work on this pink one that I already worked up. So we just got done with our very last row, which is exciting. This part takes the longest to get this big ribbing done. Chain one, and we're going to go take this out just a little bit so we can go through here, through our very first stitch. This is way back on our chain where we started from the first time. So we're going to go through here and get back on our loop and just pull that through and connect. Now we've got these linked together we're going to go back into that same stitch and the one on the other side through the loop that's closest to you underneath the closest loop and pull through with a single crochet. And you do that all the way all the way down. You're just connecting these together to make it into a circle instead of one long piece. There's my last couple stitches and my very last stitch. We're going to go through both loops right here on both sides and single crochet. There. Now we are connected. It is round. Now it's connected and we're going to work in the round all the way up. Pull this out just a little bit. The next thing we want to do is turn this inside out. I like this little edge that we just made to be on the inside. So we're going to turn this inside out or right side out at this point and bring your yarn with you. And this is now going to be the outside of our project and you can see here that it blends in pretty well you really don't see much of a seam so that works out great and I still have my trusty three millimeter hook so I just marked that stitch and I'm going to do this all the way around one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen and I'm on 15 and I need to get to 128 I'll meet you in just a second Five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, and one hundred and twenty-eight. There we have our base all the way around, and I'm going to mark this last stitch. Makes life a lot easier. You won't add or drop a stitch along the way. You don't want to do that. So then we're going to just slip stitch. 
into our first stitch and we can finish that off snip and pull through so there's my 128 stitches all the way around and I have my nice circle and my ribbing is complete hooray now we're going to move on to another color I'm going to show you how to do the base so we we'll change colors right now if you wanted to you can make the whole the whole thing one color if you wanted but I think it's fun to change it up a little bit so right now we have this complete and we're going to start on these rows right here going all the way up our sweater okay I moved on to my white here just to give you this example this is called snow capped again sugar wheel love this stuff I just love it it's a nice cotton very fun to work with. All right, so we're going to go into our first stitch right here and fasten on our new color. And chain one, and in that same stitch, we're going to put a double crochet. And move our stitch marker. That was stitch number one. We want to put a double crochet in every stitch all the way around. Now you have two options here. This one I did back loop only and made a nice edging, very straight line. And this one I did not. This line shows a little bit more. Probably doesn't make too much of a difference, but you get two choices. This is just a normal double crochet through both loops. And this one is the back loop only all the way around. So it's a really nice straight edge. So all the way around again, 128 double crochets. Okay, we have everything. I marked the first stitch and the last stitch. We have our base done. This is wonderful. Now we're going to put our three millimeter hook away. Time to get out a four. If you want it to be bigger, you can use a four and a half, but the four seemed to be the perfect size for me for a four weight yarn. So we're just going to fasten on into our first marked stitch right here. And I am going to do the back loop only one so you can see what a lovely straight line that makes. Fasten on, chain one, and in that same stitch put in our double a double crochet. Super easy peasy all the way. This is really an easy pattern. Whoopsie, and I missed my, I split my stitch. Hold on. All right, there's that. And now we're going to do a double crochet in that very same stitch. There is stitch number one. Move our marker. And I find it makes my life a lot easier if I have a marker in the first and last stitch. So we never lose or gain a stitch all the way around. All right now that is our sequence. Here we go. I'm going to go back loop only, single or double crochet again. Back loop only, double crochet all the way around. 128 double crochets in the back loop only. So you really just pick which way you want to do it. Back loop only and have a nice straight line. Or if you don't care, then go through both loops. All the way around. There's my last couple stitches. Hooray! Double crochets in my back loops. And this is my last stitch right here because it's marked. And go in the back loop. Double crochet. And I'm going to move my stitch marker because I don't want to lose or add a stitch along the way. So there's my 128 stitches, 128 double crochets all the way around. Go into the first mark stitch with a slip stitch. Chain one and turn your work. Now we're going to repeat going the other direction. Every time you meet up again, you do a slip stitch, turn your work, and do that again, and do that again, do that again. So now we get to move on to this project because that's just showing you everything that you need to know about the base of this. Base of my tiny sweater vest with the cute little sleeves. So I'm going to take these stitch markers out because I need them probably later. So I'm going to set him aside. So yay, we get to work on this guy now. So what we want to do is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten rounds of your double crochet all the way around like we just did with the white. Ten of those. 
and when you get done with the 10, then we get to move on to other parts. The next part is, I did this little part right here. Just this little part. So you can see I add joined on to my in the round, starting right here. Boom. So what we did was we skipped 10 stitches from our very first mark stitch. That's our very first stitch with the edges, or with the seam, remember? So we skipped 10 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I began right here. And we start working our double crochets towards the middle. So both sides are worked up exactly the same. I already did this one, so I'm going to show you how to do that on this side. Skip 10 from the edge, and that's where we started this part, because the sleeve is last. We started here. So what we need to do is get our stitches right, our stitch count right, for the other side. Right, so you can see here that this side is just this little part of the v-neck right here, which is this part right here. And the other side, this side is just like it. But, we worked it, but it's worked in two pieces. So you can see right here, there's my little, it's kind of like a little triangle shape right in here. Count over 10 stitches and begin here because these 10 stitches are going to be used for our capelet sleeve. So we're going to start here. So this is 20 stitches. So there's 10 and 20 and we're going to skip four in the middle. One, two, three, four. Those ones get skipped. So this is a place for a stitch marker. And then again, remember this was 20. So this wants to be 20. So there's my first stitch right here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. This is the area that we're going to build. Another one looks just like this. And you're going to say, they won't be symmetrical. They are going to be symmetrical because the way we want to do this is always working towards the V. We start on this side and work in here. So this one, we're going to start on this side and work towards that. Work towards the V-neck. So we're going to turn my work here. So I have this stitch is ready to go. We're going to work these 20 stitches. It's exactly the same on the other side. All right, with our four millimeter hook, we're going to fasten on again into our first stitch here. I'm going to fasten on, chain one, and double crochet into that same space. And now we're going to pull our stitch marker up to mark that stitch. And do that all the way across. We're going to have 20 double crochets on our very first row here. This would be row 11 of panel B, the left side of the sweater vest. There's number 19 and number 20. So they were done with that row. That was fast and easy. There's only 20 stitches here. So we just worked from here over to the V. Super easy. Now we're going to do some reducing, which again, super easy and makes this go even faster because we're going to start losing stitches. Turn my work, no chain, and skip this very first stitch go over here to this next stitch, second stitch in, and double crochet. Just finished my double crochet there, and now I want to mark the stitch because sometimes they like to sneak away and be a little bit difficult to find, so just mark your stitch. It's really, really simple. Now we're going to double crochet all the way back. So it'll end up being 19 because we skipped one stitch. There's 18. And there's my last stitch, goes into my stitch marker, last double crochet. So there's 19, we reduced once at the V, right in the middle. But on the arms, we are not reducing, so that'll be nice and straight. So we're going to chain one, turn our work, in this very first stitch, we want to do a double crochet. And I'm going to mark that, mark that stitch again, so nothing disappears on us. So every time we're at the V, we want to reduce. 
Every time we're over here, it's just a regular old stitch. So right now, we are going to double crochet 17, and in our last two stitches, we are going to double crochet two together. So let's do that. That was our first double crochet. Remember, we're going to do 17. Now there's a total of 19 stitches, and two of them at the very end will be worked together. So we'll do our 17 double crochets right now. And there's my last double crochet. Now these last two stitches, I want to work these together. So what we'll do is yarn over, go in the first stitch, pull through, keep two loops on our hook, do not finish that stitch, yarn over and go through the second stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Now I have three loops on my hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. We just did a double crochet two together. So now we've just reduced one more time. So now we have 18 stitches. So we're going to turn our work. And since we're on the inside, we are at the V. We just reduced that direction. Now we're going to reduce again. No chain. Yarn over. Skip this very first stitch. Move into the second one. So we're reducing one more time by skipping that stitch. And that's our double crochet. We're going to move our stitch marker. So each row is getting a decrease. So let's work all the way down. And there's number 16 and 17. So we are back to the arm. Our V is over here and our arm is over here. And that was a total of 17 because we've reduced. Now remember when we're on the arm, we want to do it normal. So we're going to chain one on this side, turn our work, and in this very first stitch, closest stitch that you can possibly come up with right there, is a double crochet. So this side is getting no reducing and the other side gets reduced on each row. Double crochet 15 and then we have to do the last two together. So that was number one. We'll do a total of 15 double crochets all the way down to the last two stitches that we will work together. Here's number 15. You see I have two stitches left when I'm working towards the V. I have two stitches left. I'm going to yarn over and work these two together. Let's pull through two. Keep two loops on your hook. Don't finish that stitch. And in the next one, do the same thing. Three loops on my hook. Yarn over and pull through all three. We just reduced one more time. So that was a total of 16 on this row. 15 double crochets and one that was worked together, so we have a total of 16. We're going to turn our work again. I bet you can figure out the way it goes. No chain, because we're at the V. No chaining. And we're going to skip this very first one, jump over here to the second stitch, and double crochet. So a total of 15 all the way back down to the other stitch marker. There's 14 and 15. And we're back out to the arm again. So again, we have re reduced one more time. Now since we're at the arm, this is just a normal, we're working up the edge here, chain one, turn our work. And in this very first stitch is our double crochet, because we're over at the arm edge. And we're going to move our stitch marker. Always move your stitch markers up, it makes everything a lot easier. So now we will double crochet 13. Going down to these last two, remember they're going to be worked together. So we'll double crochet down to those last two. 12 and there's 13. And that leaves me two stitches left right here, boom, boom. And we want to work those together. So yarn over, go into the first stitch, pull through two, two loops on my hook. And through the next one or the last one that's marked, do the same. Don't finish the stitch, three loops on my hook. Yarn over and pull through all three. So we just reduced again. So we reduced down to 14 stitches. So we started out with 20. So here we're at the v-neck. So we're going to turn our work. No chain. And skip the first stitch. So when we're on the inside, working towards the arm, we do a no chain, skip one, and then you do your double crochet. So we just reduced again because we skipped that stitch. Now we're going to double crochet all the way back down to our stitch marker. 
and here's my very last stitch. It's number 13. Move back to the arm. All right, we're at the arm, so we do a chain one because we want a nice straight edge here. Chain one, turn our work. And at our very first stitch, right here, we want to put a double crochet and move our stitch marker up. I forgot to move my stitch marker. He goes right here. But this stitch is kind of hard to find sometimes, so I'm moving it now for everyone else to see. There we go. Now I've got everything marked. So we want to do 11 double crochets down to our last two stitches and work those two together. And here's number 11. I have two stitches left. So I want to work these two together. So yarn over, go through the first stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, two loops on my hook, and do the same through the second one. Yarn over, pull through two, three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through everything. So we just reduced one more time and we're at back at the V. So we turn our work and we're at the V working towards the arm. We do no chain, skip the first one, and double crochet in the second stitch. And this time I will remember to move my stitch marker up so I don't have to do any counting. And that was our first double crochet. We've got to go all the way back down to our stitch marker. Nine and ten and eleven. we just did our little front panel. We're reducing on every row at the v-neck. So we just reduced down one more time to 11 stitches total. Now we're done reducing. So what we're going to do is super easy. Chain one, turn our work, and we're going to do 11 double crochets just like normal. So our very first stitch we're going to do a double crochet and move our stitch marker up. We'll do a total of 11. And there's number 10 and number 11 in our marked stitch. Now since we're done reducing, we're going to treat this just like normal. Chain one, turn our work, and do another 11 double crochets. We are going to do that for a total of four rows. That was row number one. And we're starting row number two. There's my first double crochet. And again, all the way down. There's number 10 and stitch 11. And that was our second row. We want to do a total of four. So that was the second row. I'll meet you when I'm done with my four rows. So we chain one, turn our work, and continue. Do that two more times for a total of four rows of 11 double crochet with no reducing. And there's my fourth row. There's stitch number 10 and stitch number 11. My March stitch. Hooray! Now we're done with that front panel. That was easy. So now we have two front panels that look exactly the same. We have our little flap, our little v-neck part, and the other side is exactly the same. We started on this side and worked this direction. On this side, we start this direction. Start from here, work this way, always working towards the V. Start here and work towards the V. So what we did was we made the entire front of our sweater. Right in here. Very easy. Alright, so now once we get here, we just did our four rounds. We can finish this color off, snip, and just pull this through. Now we're going to turn our work around to the other side and you're going to work the back panel. I already worked it because I wanted to work the sleeve. Here are our original 10 rows. There's our ribbing right here and there's our 10 rows that we did all the way around. And there's an armhole and our back panel is just a, it's just a simple rectangle. It's 44 double crochets wide and then you just leave a gap right here of 20 stitches from your front panel. It's 14 rows of double crochet 44 wide. 
So 44 starting here, all the way across, chain one, turn your work, all the way across, chain one, turn your work, for 14 rows. And so now that you have your back panel done, which is just a rectangle, 14 rows of 44 double crochets, make sure you have your starting point and 20 stitches in between your front panel and your back panel. Now we get to attach these. So it'll start to look like a sweater. I already attached it a little bit up here because I needed to in order to get the sleeve complete. But normally I would do this completely, have the back panel and both of these front panels done before I did a sleeve. But I wanted to have a sleeve done to show. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna connect panel A, panel B, and the back panel, panel C. We're gonna connect all of those together so we have a, what looks like clothing. We're almost to a, having it be a sweater. So we want to go through both the front side and the back side right here. So we're going to go through the green right here, through both loops, and through the back, and just single crochet. Do that for all of these 11 stitches on our front panel. One in each stitch. And there's my last stitch on my front panel. So now we want to work the middle. And I'm going to count back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There's my 11 stitches on this side that I need for this flap. But now we're going to connect the two right here. And I don't want my neckline to be too tight. So before we attach this in between, we want to do a tiny increase so that there's nice and roomy. You don't want your neck to be tight. So in the first stitch we're going to do two single crochets, tiny increase, and then a single crochet, single crochet, two single crochets in the same stitch, and then a single crochet, single crochet, two in the same stitch, single, single, two in the same stitch, single, single. I'm just going to do that across until we get to our other marker. A tiny increase, single, and single. Right, and we made it to our other stitch marker, so now it's time to loop these together. So I can take this one out. Don't need him anymore. Don't need that one anymore. So we're going to go through the front panel in the first stitch and through the back panel in the next available stitch, which is right here. And single crochet. I can take that marker out our single crochets all the way to the edge. And now here's my last stitch. We're going to go through the front and through the back. And my last single crochet. And there, now we are attached. So it looks like a sweater. So you just fasten that off. And then these two ends should, should meet up. And just tie those in and up. Because we're going to work right over those with our sleeve. So I can take this marker out. Right, so next, there, we're all connected. We turned our work all the way around, so we're going to be starting and working towards the V-neck. Remember, we're always working towards the V-neck. We want to give ourselves a very nice base for attaching our sleeve. So what we're going to do is I need to attach my yarn at the base here, and in every one of these double crochet rows all the way around, we want to put in two single crochets, two at the top where we joined our panels together, and two on the other side. So that's a total of 14 rows here. So there's 28 stitches plus two plus 28, which is a total of 58 stitches. So we fasten on and do two single crochets in each row. And I'm going to mark this guy. So there's our first row. In this row, one, 
two. And there's the next row. There's the next row. Two in each double crochet row. And number 28 along the first side. We want to go two into that last single crochet from where we joined. So two single crochets in there. One, two. And then two down the other side. You'll end up burying all this stuff. We have some ends to weave in later. So again, all the way down, another 28 single crochets because there will be two in each row. And there's our last two. There's number 27 and number 28. So it was 28 plus 2 up at the top and 28 down this side. So 58. If it's easier for you to just to count to 58, just do 58 stitches all the way around, ending right here. All right, so there's all of our stitches all the way around. I'm going to get my scissors. We can finish this one off right now. So we need to start over here. So finish off that nice little base that we made. So now we can start working our sleeve. Makes it a lot easier now. We have a nice finished edge and working into these stitches will be a lot simpler. So what we want to do is going back to our stitches that we marked over here, the first 10, 10 that are closest, because we want to work towards the V. Remember, we're always working towards the V. Fasten on your cape, capelet sleeve color. So here we go. Fasten on this color. And we want to increase the width so we have a nice wide sweater sleeve. We want to increase the width so in each one of these 10 stitches we want to put two single crochet. So there's my first one and I'm going to mark that stitch. One and two. And the next one two stitches. Each one all the way over so you'll end up with 20 stitches. And there's number 19 and number 20. So we just increased and so we can make a nice wide sleeve like this. Take out the stitch marker. We're going to need it in a second so don't let it go too far. Finished our 20 stitches. Now what we need to do is we need to work up our sleeve. So in these first two stitches right here in that single crochet we're going to slip stitch and then in the next one we're also going to slip stitch. So we're attaching our sleeve to the base, the body of our sweater. Now turn our work and we want to skip over those two slip stitches. They do not count anymore. They do not count in our stitch counts for our sleeves. So skip one and two and then we want to work in the back loop just like we did for our original ribbing that goes around our tummy and mark this stitch, mark the front loop of this stitch so it's easy to find later. You can mark the whole stitch if you want, but I found it's easier just to mark the loop that we're actually going to be working in because sometimes it gets a little tight. So now we're going to work back to our stitch marker in back loop only. Super easy peasy. So we're going to make another set of ribbing that looks just like the ribbing that we made for our waist. And this one is 20 wide number 19 and then always in the one that's on the outside not the one where we're doing the attachments over here but the one that's on the outside go through underneath both loops and make a nice finished edge so there's row one of our sleeve chain one turn your work so like I said they're on the outside one so that stitch is going to be through both loops again it's a single crochet mark this stitch and we're working back loops again, back loops only to make more ribbing. Working back towards the inside of the sleeve. All right, we've made it back. There's my last one. Made it back to our stitch marker 
and see how tight this can get. I'm glad I marked it. So we're just going to work in that back loop. So there's stitch number 20. Take him out. We're working on the inside again. Go to the next stitch that you have not worked in your base of the yellow that we added just a little bit ago. And we're going to slip stitch one and then slip stitch in the next one also. So on the inside we're always going to slip stitch two so we can work our sleeve up on the outside is just a chain one and turn our work. So now we'll turn our work here and we're going to skip those two slip stitches. Those do not count in our stitch counts. So we skip those, pretend they don't even exist and we're jumping over to this one because that's our stitch number one, back loop only. And a very smart person will use a stitch marker here on this what I see at this point is my front loop, but when I turn my work, it will be my back loop, and this will be the work loop I need to work. And again, back loop only. Back loops only. Single crochet until you get to our very last stitch that's marked on the outside of our project, and that it gets worked a single crochet through both loops. And that's what you do all the way around until it looks just like this one. And each one of these will have a slip stitch all the way around. Remember there's two slip stitches for each time that you made it, make it to the middle. It's one for each row, but you can't do your slip stitch when you're on this side. Remember when you work from the outside towards the inside, towards the V, we're always working towards the V. You chain one, turn your work, and work all the back loops. Back to this marker slip stitch and slip stitch. When you're working away from the V, you turn your work, skip over those slip stitches and work the back loop only all the way up to the edge. Just keep doing that and keep doing that and keep doing that until it looks like this or until it looks like this. This one is done on both sides. I'm going to pretend that I did all of that because I'm not going to work on this right now on the camera. So what I'm going to do is show you how we're going to connect these once you get your 58 rows done. All right, now that your sleeve is done, you just need to connect this part of the sleeve to the bottom of the base of your sweater. All right, so what we want to do is we turn this inside out. We want to connect this piece to this piece on the inside so that they look the same on both sides and we don't have any seams that are showing. We're inside out now. I want to connect this part to this part. Remember this is 20 stitches and this one is 10. So we need to fix that. Go through the very first stitch here. Pull in our working yarn. I made my loop way too big. Alright, and then we're going to chain one so we're secure. Go back into that same stitch. and go through our first stitch on the yellow side, on the sleeve side, and slip stitch. Go back into that same one on the body of your sweater and into the next one of your yellow. So each one of these is going to get two slip stitches so we can reduce back down again. So in our second pink stitch here, I'm going to go through to the other side and do one slip stitch and then in the next stitch on the yellow another slip stitch. So we can reduce this back down. So two slip stitches and here's two and there's my last two going through this first pink stitch twice and then to the back once for each stitch. So we reduced our sleeve was 20 but the base was only 10 so now we have everything connected very nicely. So now we can just finish this off. And snip. Let's turn our work back right side out take out these stitch markers. We don't need them anymore. And there you go. Now our sleeve is connected on both sides. And there was the back side where we just connected. 
Isn't that beautiful? If you have both sleeves done, you can call this done. Yay! One other thing you could do, I did on this one just because I thought it was a fun outline since this was a white sweater. I did outline the the neckline and how you do that would be all right, we skip these four stitches in the front so you want to make sure we work in those ones this time so we're gonna work a single crochet in every single crochet which is going to be this part right here and along the back neck here and just like we did on this side we want to work two single crochets into every double crochet along the way I think this one looks cute the way it is. I like the colors blending like this on all the stripes. I want to keep it that way. So this one's going to stay. So once you have both sleeves done, if you wanted to do an outline, you can. Otherwise, you can call this done and you can wear it. But here is my finished product. This one is made out of cotton, remember? And it's so pretty. My daughter already tried it on. She loves it. So I thought I'd make some more in different colors. And then remember I had this one over here too. An autumn vibe going on. So you just do our base, do your ribbing, work 10 around, work this panel, this panel, which are identical, work that panel, and do your sleeves. It really is easy. I think you can have it done in a, probably in a weekend. I just have some ends to weave in and another sleeve to make on this one and I'm done. But there you go. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to Thimblehooks and stop back soon. Thanks. Bye.